and Trinsenatha, here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with the light of the lamp to meet Christ. Good morning. This morning's Mass has been offered for us and our families, and in particular, Beverly Fry Rutha. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Today is the uh, memorial of St. Agatha, a virgin and martyr. Uh, the historical records uh, don't give us a great deal of information about her life, but that she, uh, was, she had the opportunity to deny Jesus or to stand for him and that standing for him cost her imprisonment and also cost her her life. Her name, Agatha, is the Greek word for good. Uh, she was a very uh, powerful witness in the early church, and that's why we still remember her today. She is the uh, patron saint of a couple of major cities in Sicily where she experienced her martyrdom. Today is also the first Friday of the month and a time when we think about the sacred and merciful heart of Jesus. So let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by pausing to call to mind our sins and asking God for mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May the virgin martyr St. Agatha implore your compassion for us, O Lord, we pray. For she found favor with you by the courage of her martyrdom and the merit of her chastity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect hospitality. But through it, some have unknowingly entertained angels. Be mindful of prisoners as of sharing their imprisonment, and of the ill-treated as of yourself, for you also are in the body. Let marriage be honored among all, and the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge the immoral and adulterous. Let your life be free from the love of money, but be content with what you have. For he had said, I will never forsake you or abandon you. Thus we may say with confidence, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Though an army encamped against me, my heart will not fear. Though war be waged upon me, even then will I trust. The Lord is my light and my salvation. For he will hide me in his abode in the day of trouble. He will conceal me in the shelter of his tent. He will set me high upon a rock. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Your presence, O Lord, I see. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Alleluia.
Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. King Herod heard about Jesus, for his fame had become widespread. And people were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. Others were saying, he is Elijah. Still others, he is a prophet like any of the prophets. But when Herod learned of it, he said, it is John whom I beheaded. He has been raised up. Herod was the one who had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. Herodias had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. His own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The, girl, the king said to the girl, Ask of me whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her, I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? The mother replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request, I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded John in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl in turn gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. This is a, a famous scripture story today. It's been the subject of a lot of theatrical productions and dramas and, of course, an opera as well. The story of John the Baptist's beheading is pretty grisly and shows us how uh, human beings can resort to unfathomable uh, violence in dealing with one another. But it also shows us an incredible parallel between the ultimate death of John and the death of Jesus. In the case of John, it's uh, King Herod really was, he really liked John. He loved to listen to him. He didn't like the fact that John castigated him for marrying his brother's wife, Herodias, and getting rid of his brother. He didn't like that. But he liked a lot of the other stuff that uh, John said. But he couldn't tolerate him, of course, attacking his authority. So he did put him in prison. Herod reminds us of Pilate, who was very enamored with Jesus. He didn't see anything wrong with Jesus. He didn't understand why Jesus was even arrested, but, but he kept him under arrest. Uh, in each story, of course, there is a villain. In the story of uh, John the Baptist, the villain is Herodias, who comes to Herod and, and, and through her daughter and says, I want his head on a platter. And of course, the story of Jesus is the religious leaders uh, come to him and they say, we want Jesus crucified. So we've got two civil authorities who are attracted to men, think they're good, holy men, kind of like them in a way, but they're villains that exert pressure on them. And unfortunately, both men, their life is all about money and power and status. 
and their weak men, they lack completely in courage and heroism. And so in order to, to save their position and their status and their wealth, they give in and do something that's absolutely terrible. They order the execution of innocent men. And uh, so that is a parallel again between John and Jesus. And finally, after the death, uh, the disciples of John come and take his body and lay it in a tomb. That's what they do with Jesus. The disciples take his body off the cross and lay it in a tomb. So we see in the story of the death of John a prefiguring of what's going to happen in the death of Jesus. And I think the challenge for us is to, uh, you know, to say it's, it is easy to be caught up in worldly opinion and to be so caught up in our status, our wealth, our power. And be it really to be overcome with fear of losing it all, because that was the bottom. If, if there was a, a sin of these men, it was that they were fearful. They were fearful of losing something that they thought was their total identity in life. And if they actually were faithful to God, their life would be completely different for the worse, which in fact it wouldn't have been. It would have been completely different for the better. But because they lacked that faith, uh, and because of the great fear, they did this horrible, heinous things to two innocent men. And again, the, uh, the message for us is uh, we're going to be fearful of many things. There are people that are living in terrifying fear of the coronavirus. Not just a, a prudent, prudent caution, but like paralyzing fear. It's never good to fear. That's a lack of trust in God. Or fear for their safety in the community or fear for their finances or their future or their health or wealth or whatever. All kinds of fears paralyze people and prevent us from really being faithful to God and following God. So the, these uh, Herod and Pilate stand in witness to uh, what it's like when we give in to our fears of what we're going to lose by following God instead of recognizing what we can gain by following God. And the martyr whom we celebrate today, the virgin and martyr, Agatha, she was apparently either a, a teenage girl or a young woman. And uh, the proposition to her was very clear. Deny Jesus and follow our orders or suffer torture and death. And she uh, chose to, to uh, uh, embrace torture and death because she loved Jesus and she had faith in Jesus. And she did not allow her human fear to overcome her. Incidentally, it's, it's interesting when you think about John, we know that John did have fear when he was in prison because one of the other gospels tells us that he sent his disciples to Jesus to find out, Jesus, are you really the one or am I completely mistaken? So he had fear and doubt. And Jesus actually sweat blood, according to Luke's gospel, in the Garden of Gethsemane. So it's not like they didn't have fear. It's just that their fear didn't undo them and unglue them. They turned to God and their fear turned into courage and trust. And that's the challenge for all of us. Not to let fear paralyze us and destroy us, but to turn to God and to ask God to give us greater faith and courage and trust. So uh, that's the challenge for all of us today. So let's follow the uh, example of John and Jesus and Agatha and uh, recognize that the Lord can and wants to quell all of our fears, especially our unfounded fears that keep us from faithfully following Christ. And now we come before the Lord to bring our prayers and needs all members of the church. May God bless us in the service of his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may God grant them fortitude and strength in choosing to promote the dignity of all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lonely and despairing among us, may they know God's love and consolation in the midst of their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocation to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our diocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Prayer for protection and healing from coronavirus. Lord Jesus, you travel from towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus, may they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. Allow the vaccine to be successful in halting the spread of the virus. Be with the leaders of nations. Give them wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Grant us peace in this time of uncertainty and challenge. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus, for you are our loving and healing Lord, our Lady of Montsacco, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, and St. Rosalie. Pray for us. Amen. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our Archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of our Lady of Constantinople in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord, our Lady of Pramsakor, hastens to help us. Mother Henry and Toledo, pray for us that we may be a holy man. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings we bring in celebration of blessed Agatha win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Agatha, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so in the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Agatha, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
commune and antiphon. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet Christ the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, who bestowed on blessed Agatha a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant we pray through the power of this sacrament that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great weekend. Thank you.
Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.